Barb Cordell didn't have much money. When she died, to a testament to this, literally she had $6.18 to her name. And what she did have, her son Randy says, she gave away. That's exactly how she'd want it. She was probably upset that she hadn't given away the $6. But her life was full of riches. No, none of us make a dime. I get a lot out of it, though. <laughs> that she shared with anyone who needed them at Potter Noster House. I've been getting good care. I've been getting good help. Barb opened Potter Noster in 1985. It was a hospice house for people with HIV and AIDS. Potter Noster started with just one patient who Barb met at a homeless shelter. In 1985, people started coming in who had HIV. We found our first one actually at the open shelter. The next day, two more men came in who needed housing. So we quickly changed a house for the homeless into a house for AIDS, simply because AIDS was here and nobody was really addressing it. And it just needed to be done. It wasn't in my plan of things. And now that's what we do. Svetlana Harlan works at the Ohio History Connection. She says Barb and a group of volunteers cared for more than 900 people. Paternoster House provided 24-7 medical care, food, a place to stay, and also fellowship and, and friendship and a dignified place for a lot of folks to spend their final days. Barb opened Potter Noster during a time of intense homophobia, made even worse by the AIDS epidemic. She was a devout Catholic, and many of her patients were LGBTQ. For Barb, she didn't see it as an issue. She saw it as these are folks that need help. She just was all about the individual. Every individual was a child of God to her. Barb gave all she had to the patients at Potter Noster, but the volunteers gave even more. They comforted the dying as many battled their own HIV infections. They worked alongside those who were dying, knowing that they'd be in that same bed someday. One of those volunteers was a gender fluid man named PETA. He was HIV positive. He took care of people who were sicker than him. I'm just somebody that's looking for the smallest little bit of hope out there. One of the people PETA cared for was a gay activist named David Kirby. He came to Potter Noster in the last months of his life. I hope that Potter Noster can grow and be able to uh, take care of more sick people just like I'm being taken care of. Therese Frere famously photographed David's final moments. It showed his body ravaged by AIDS and his father cradling him. David's picture was published in Life magazine and used in a Benetton ad. The photo has been credited with humanizing the AIDS epidemic. It defied the stereotype that people with the virus died in isolation. The fact that we were seeing these images of kind of a typical American family surrounding their loved one who was dying of this disease, um, it showed that, in fact, people were, were there for their loved ones and uh, they were kind of fighting this idea of, like, this is a disease that isolates folks. Potter Noster closed in 2000, leaving behind a rich history. Soon, the Ohio History Connection plans to honor it with a historical marker to make sure the legacy of Potter Noster and its patients are treasured today. The whole idea of trying to serve people started with a simple, our father in my heart.